Welcome to another session of Learn to Code for Kids. All right, I'm going to make this super, super simple and thorough. Now, this, these are things you need to know before we can dive in to making an awesome game. Bear with me, please. You cannot skip the fundamentals, the things you need to know before you can just hop in and make a game. It's like riding a bike. How are you going to hop on the bike and just ride it without some training wheels first? Now, thanks to the awesome resources out there available on the internet, you don't have to wait years or months. You can pick this up in days. Hell, by the end of this series that I've made called Learn to Code for Kids, you would have actually made a game, a playable game. that You can do whatever you want with. You can try to publish it. You can build more levels. Let's get, let's, let's do it. Just stick with me. Even though some parts may be, okay, I've, I know this before or okay you said that before I know it might be a little repetitive at the beginning but I just want to make sure that you caught those information because those are the most important ones why I would repeat them alright so let's dive into unity your window may not look like this these are projects that I've already started so you will probably have nothing here if you're in if you're now running uh, unity for the first time Click the new button here in the top right corner. And then let's give your project a name. You can select between 2D, 3D. Let's just go with 3D for now. I'm going to call my project uh, example. And I'm going to hit create. Unity will now create your project and open up. And here we are. My Unity is opened up and I'm ready to go. Your Unity should look something like this. This is my game view. And then this is my scene view. The scene view holds all the items that are in your game. Right now I have a light and a camera. Over here in the left panel is the hierarchy which show you those same items that are in the game. Everything that are in the game will be in this panel. If it's not in this panel, <laughs> it's not in the game, obviously. And at the bottom here is my project where I keep my folders and whatever artwork, scripts, and other components that I need. These are my physical files that I can navigate to or import more files to do more stuff. Alright. So next, I like to have my scenes next to each other. So I can just click right here and drag, kind of clip it to the side. Just like that. You can adjust these windows to fit your needs better. Let's not forget the inspector on the right panel. So every time you click on an object, the inspector gives you the full information about an object. For example, the light. It has a transform, which every object will have. And then the light components itself. These are called components. You can add more things to the light by clicking Add Component and navigate through a list of categories and choose one. Let's click on the camera. You'll see the camera also has the transform, which, like I said, every object will have. Now I'll explain why in just a second. And then the camera uh, uh, component as well. There's one to show a skybox or a solid color. 
Now, the scene view is where you edit. The game view is what your players would see. This is what your game currently looks like. And that's why I like having them next to each other so I can see what my game look like as I am editing it. Now, if you mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down, you can zoom within your scene. If you right click with your middle finger, or maybe you're left handed, I think it would still be your middle finger. No, I think it would be your index finger at that point. Hmm, I'm not sure. If you right click and hold, you can turn your view around and look in other directions. While holding, pressing the A W S D keys, you can navigate around like a third or first person shooter game to kind of move around in your scene and get a better view. As you can see right now is my camera. It's just pointing off that way and that's what we're seeing in our scene. Let's add something in there. Up here, next to asset, it's game objects. I can create empty ones, I can create empty child ones, or I can just create a 3D object, or 2D, or effects, lights, audio, etc, etc. What I'm going to create is a 3D object. I can create a cube. I can create a sphere, capsule, cylinder, plane, quads, and more. Let's create a cube. And let's create spheres. Now, in my scene view, I'm going to zoom in, check them out. They're both created in the same location, so they're kind of inside of each other. Here's my cube, here's my spheres. Here's my move tool at the top. I can use to move things, drag any one of these points, green up, the red left and right and the blue this way there's three coordinates which makes sense because this is three-dimensional and this is a 3d environment D stands for dimensional I can do the same with this tool Next, the rotate tool allows me to rotate my objects. And then the scale tool. You can click on an object, scale it out or in on either one of these directions. Holding the middle and going left or right will scale each side at the same time. And then this is mainly for 2D, 2D uh, objects. This allows you to rotate, scale, and do almost everything all at the same time. But it is the move and rotate and scale object tool. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's an all in one tool. Next is this play button here that allows you to play your game and preview. Note that when it turns blue, that means my game is playing. But this is what my game looks like. Huh, nothing's happening. Well, my cube has about the same component as my spheres. Transform, which is you find this on every object, the transform you'd find on every object. 
Let's see why nothing is happening. If I select my cube, let's see, it has a transform. Just like my Fierce has a transform, which is the position, rotation, and scale. All object in the scene will have a transform. This is what tells them where they are in the scene. Without the transform, they're not in the scene. And then a mesh filter. This is basically the 3D object. Right now I have this sphere selected, but if I changed it, it would look like a cylinder. <laughs> but it should be a cube. Next is the mesh renderer. Even though the object is there, you won't be able to see it without it being rendered. So you can turn this off if you wanted to bake an invisible wall or something like that. Many games has invisible many 3D games will have invisible wall for areas that you should not go through and they use this very same technique. And then there is a box collider, which means if the game is playing, this object will not be able to go through this object. Currently, they can, but that's only in the editor. I want to put my camera about right here. So let's find a camera. Drag it a little closer. Up and down. If I wanted to find an object in the scene, I can select it here. Put my mouse cursor in this area and then just press F on my keyboard and it finds the object for me. In the next video, let's talk about components so we can see how we can actually have physics in this game. In a sense, what we're going to do is a form of programming without code. Thank you. Hey, you should become a part of this positive and educational channel by hitting that subscribe button. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.